Hey guys, it's the Big Geordie Geek here, and I'm going to take you through a battle report today for uh, Drop Fleet Commander. Uh, we're going to see the uh, UCM, the United Colonies of Mankind, take on the Vicious Scourge. So uh, this is a basic, very basic uh, intro um, scenario that actually comes from the first edition box set, the, the setup and stuff. So we're going to just take you through it now. Um, first time doing it like this uh, editing way so uh, it might be a bit higgledy piggledy but we'll get there so let's have a look so let's start off by taking a quick look at the fleet we have selected for the UCM now mm, uh, I need to learn how to take better photographs so they don't end up with blow at the back but this is the UCM fleet so we'll run through the three um, battle groups bit by bit uh, the first battle group we have here is a Pathfinder group. Uh, this has uh, two Toulon class frigates, uh, which you can see at the front there, uh, with three of the small mass drivers on them. And then uh, to the rear, oh, terrible photography, honestly, um, is a, uh, a Berlin class. This is the um, new Berlin class that comes in the starter set. And I probably need to take a hairdryer to straighten out some of those prongs, but uh, you get the idea. Next up, we have a line, and this has a uh, a Rio uh, class um, in it. The new Rio again, probably need to take out the head and straighten up some of those. Uh, and that has got the uh, that's got uh, all mass drivers, whereas the uh, Berlin before has the um, uh, what do you call it, the Cobra uh, burn through laser. Excellent weapon. And finally, for the UCM, we have the Vanguard Battle Group, which contains the Moscow Heavy Cruiser. That's the heavy cruiser with uh, lots of mass driver cannons on it and uh, two New Orleans class strike carriers. And they are what get people to the ground, uh, which wins the game at the end of the day. Next up is the Scourge Fleet, which uh, I painted in a sort of color shift scheme there using a paint called Shellshocked uh, from a Turbo Dork. Lovely paint. So let's have a look at those individual battle groups then, shall we? And we're going to start actually with the Vanguard. So sort of in a reverse order this time. We've got, we've got a Shenlong class heavy cruiser and a gargoyle, pair of gargoyle class strike cruisers. Again, these are the equivalent of New Orleans. Get the troops on the ground. You know what? I really need to take a photography class. Oh, God. And next up, we have a Pathfinder group with an Ifrit class cruiser at uh, the back there and a pair of Harpy class frigates. So uh, they're going to be lots of fun. And then finally, we have a lone Wyvern class cruiser in a, a uh, line uh, battle group. So let's take a look at the table. So in the uh, so that's the layout. It's two posters that come came with the uh, two player box set that uh, you can see on the uh, right there from the first edition. Um, you sort of see the edge of it there. Uh, and basically we've got it set up. We've got some de debris fields around, some fine, some heavy, and then along the center we have three clusters. One big cluster in the center, and two smaller, well medium sized clusters on either edge. And uh, this is my opponent's uh, uh, second or third time playing um, Drop Fleet Commander. Uh, they weren't comfortable being on camera, so take that for what it is. Uh, but that was basically the layout we've got there. Uh, I do have a neoprene mat for um, other games, but this is sort of like the, the example mission that came with the uh, original starter box uh, from when it was uh, released on Kickstarter. Now, as you know, I don't go massively in depth on mechanics. I'm more about the whole narrative aspect of the game. But uh, this is basically how you decide who to basically the game. So the ship's armor only gets one dice because there's only one normal hit. It cannot stop the normal dice. The Shenlong's armor is a four plus to stop the normal roll. And it does roll a four. Now, you might be asking, why can't I see this wonderful, beautiful wyvern? And the problem is that um, I stupidly actually forgot to take a picture here. So I'm an idiot. Anyway, you've got the Moscow, which activated next uh so the new orleans and the moscow move towards the central cluster with the new orleans actually dropping a low a, 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 an orbital layer into low orbit now they need to get to atmospheric in order to drop troops and you win this game by winning the ground war so that's the important thing it's drop fleet commander tech another ship so uh for example 
pull. If it's six inches, you'll scan. That's how far you can scan and your, and your weapons are accurate in that distance. But as well as that, you have signature. So if a ship's signature is three inches, it and uh, it basically says that for three inches around, a three inch bubble around that ship, it's vulnerable to being, it's vulnerable to being detected because it's giving off a signal. Now, when you do certain things, you get spikes. Uh, and and they can add distance onto your uh, um, scan rate, onto your signature as it were. So your signature increases with a minor and a major spike. So basically means your ship becomes more detectable. Now, if the scan range and the signature range collide, that means they uh, basically, um, you can hit, be hit. So it's not a straight case of a simple range you've also got to be aware because you can do things like go onto silent running which reduces your spike uh, um, and things like that so everything you do if it's unusual can result in a spike uh, standard and stuff will will not result in spikes so um, in this case basically the 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 three inch there's a three inch scan and there's a uh, sorry a three inch sig signal um, and a uh, a six inch scan so they don't actually meet because the uh unfortunately the wyvern is 15 inches away and he basically mismeasured uh the next move for the ucm player that's me by the way um <laughs> is to open fire on the shenlong with its linked mass drivers uh the uf uh four two hundreds uh basic basically we're, we're, we're shooting here uh I, we, we probably got a few of these rules wrong knowing our luck but we tried our best uh so the uf uh, 4200s uh, score three hits and the uf 6 400s get two critical hits which is fantastic for me however with its point defenses the shenlong does stop one critical hit and with armor stops two normal hits making it takes two it takes two whole points basically so uh yay now for the next activation, um, well, actually, uh, both sides have the same strategy rating. Now, if you're in a game where you have an admiral on board one of the vessels, you would normally add their um, their, their sort of value to your strategy ratings, and whoever wins uh, wins that one. Um, but in this case, because we got no admirals we're having to roll off and the ucm win and decide they are going to go first so moving the pathfinder group in the ucm fire their two longs first at the shenlong but only score a single critical hit uh, which the shenlong's point defenses manage to resist uh, the Berlin then fires its Cobra Heavy Lazy Laser at the Shenlong, uh, hitting with one shot. Now, burn. Now, this weapon has what we call the burn through rule, and basically that means is for every successful shot, uh, it gets another uh, it gets another attack until it gets to a maximum. In the case of the Cobra Heavy Lazy on the Berlin, it's six plus maximum. It gets two shots. It can have six maximum hits. In this case, we get one hit and we get one critical, um, but we fell on the roll, for, roll third dice, so that um, stops. Now, of course, the uh, um, burn through laser also gives the uh, ship a minor spike because it's a big, heavy uh, laser that, you know, is very easily seen out in space. Uh, however, the point defenses of the Shenlong resist the critical hit and its armor stops the normal hit, so it doesn't take any further uh, damage there. Uh, the Scourge then move their Pathfinder group forward uh, on standard orders. One Harpy has to move through a dense debris field. Uh, this results in a hit, but his armor does actually stop it. And the Harpies then choose to move into low orbit. Um, wasn't quite sure why, but I guess he's going to try and take on the uh, New Orleans, which he does. Uh, he decides he's going to attack uh, my New Orleans, the uh, <laughs> key thing I really need there. Uh, so they fire um, the uh, Oculus Beams. I wasn't quite sure why, but Oculus Beams went for the Oculus Beams rather than the, the uh, uh, um, rather than anything else. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and he scores one hit, uh, but the New Orleans point defenses uh, resist the attack. Now, again, I'm going to emphasize this is probably our first game since... Mm -hmm. <laughs> since uh before the pandemic so uh we're probably rusty on the rules and optimizations i wouldn't have gone for the oculus beam i would have gone for the plasma weapon but it is what it is it was his choice wasn't it so let's move on to turn three 
So turn three sees the Scourge win the first activation, going first with their Pathfinder on Station Keeping, and that gets them a minor spike, which makes them easier to hit. Uh, the Ifrit uh, then fires its Furnace Cannon at the Rio, uh, which scores uh, two hits, uh, and a further two with Burn Through, one of which is a critical. Uh, the point defenses stop one normal hit, and the armor stops uh, another one, meaning that the uh, uh, ship is going to uh, be taking, uh, the Rio that is, it's going to be taking two hull points. The Harpies then open fire with their Oculus Beams and are on scan range, so that basically gives them Scold, uh, which basically makes it uh, harder for uh, um, the, the armor to save it, and uh, they hit with both uh, shots. Um, yeah, so that's always fun. Uh, the point defenses manage to stop one, but the other goes through uh, the, the armor, uh, losing the Rio another two hull points, so four in total it's lost. Uh, the UCM Vanguard then activates and takes station keeping. Uh, that basically means that they're, they're moving, uh, uh, no, they can move, they can stay still or they can move up to half, but they take a minor spike um, and they can shoot one weapon. Uh, so they take station keeping, the new Orleans drop into atmosphere as the Moscow moves forward towards the Wyvern. So the, the new Orleans are now into atmosphere, which is good for them because it basically means they're really difficult to hit. Uh, from, well, they, they're impossible to hit from uh, orbit, so uh, they are kind of protected down there. Uh, the Moscow then fires its mass drivers at the Wyvern, hitting three times with the UF 4200s and three criticals with the UF 6400. Uh, the Wyvern managed to stop uh, one of the criticals with, with its point defenses and all three normal hits on, on its armor, uh, taking two damage in total. In the next activation, the Scourge win and choose to go first, activating the line group with the Wyvern, which uses station keeping uh, to move into Scold range and then fires its Plasma Tempest, getting seven dice against the, the uh, Moscow. Uh, it scores six uh, hits, uh, five of which are critical, uh, of which the Moscow's point defenses can't stop any of it, uh, meaning the Moscow loses six hull points in total because these Scourge are vicious at close range. Now, because the Moscow has now been reduced to uh, half of its damage, it has to take a uh, critical damage test on a table, uh, which we have, and you basically roll on that. Various um, bits happen when you uh, roll on that, and this you roll one to see what type of system is affected, whether it's the engines or the hull, or in this case, it's the, the hull. Uh, sorry, no, it's the scanners, uh, which uh, are knocked offline, meaning its scan range is now reduced to one inch. So it's uh, taken some damage there. Quite nasty damage. Uh, the UCM Pathfinder goes next and they go weapons free. That basically means they can fire all of their weapons. So they move towards the enemy. Uh, the Toulons open fire on the gargoyle, scoring two criticals and two standard hits. Uh, the Gargoyles, the point defenses, unfortunately, fail to stop any of those hits, and uh, it, they take uh, four hits in total, which is not good at all, because uh, that was enough to destroy that Gargoyle, uh, uh, causing it to uh, burn up and fall out of the sky. The Berlin then fires its Cobra laser and uh, UF 4200s at the Wyvern, scoring two hits with the Cobra, one of which is critical, and four hits with the Mass Driver, one of them being critical. Uh, the Wyvern managed to stop one critical hit with its point defenses and two normal hits with its armor, meaning it takes three hull points in total. And this does result in the scanners of the uh, Wyvern being knocked offline. Second scanner result of the game. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping for other results there to make it more interesting. Anyway, the Berlin then fires its Cobra laser and UF 4200s at the Wyvern, scoring two hits with the Cobra, one of which is a uh, critical, and four uh, hits with the mass drivers, with one being critical. The Shenlong's uh, point defenses stop the crit and one normal hit, and the armor stops one standard hit, meaning it takes two uh, hull points. 
Now at this point, I buggered up and forgot to take a photo, but basically what happened at this point, the Scourge Vanguard group goes next and the Gargoyle drops into low orbit to uh, drop some troops if it can, and the Shenlong moves forward uh, and uh, um, uh, uses station keeping orders. Uh, the Shenlong then fires its Plasma Storm, getting nine shots at the Berlin, scoring a paltry four hits, one of which is a crit. Uh, the Berlin's point defenses stop one hit uh, and its armor the two normal hits, uh, but the critical still takes a whole point. Now we're into the roundup phase and this is where get things get interesting. The New Orleans are in low orbit, meaning they can deploy troops and tanks to the ground and they decide to uh, drop into the two central industrial sectors this uh, uh, this turn, which scores them four VP uh, victory points because they're holding the large clusters. At least I do believe that as soon as they get down, they can go, mm, yeah, okay. We may have got it wrong, but we're just trying. It's first game since pandemic and we've probably gotten a bunch wrong. It's a new rule book. And anyway, <laughs> let's move on to turn four. The first activation sees the UCM win with a roll off uh, because they both use the same strategy value and activates its Rio on standard orders, uh, which leaves sort of the main battle to try and regroup and get around. At least that's the plan there that I had. The Wyvern then goes weapons free and takes a major spike as it moves in on the Moscow. Now, when firing all of its weapons, its Oculus Beam misses, but its Plasma Tempest gets a total of seven shots. Not great, it should get more, and hits with five of them, two of which are critical hits. Uh, the Moscow's point defenses stop one crit, and its armor stops a further one of the normal hits, meaning it takes a further three hull points. So uh, the Moscow is in danger. In the next activation, the UCM go first with their Pathfinder and elect to order station keeping, with the Toulons and Berlin shifting their aim to the Shen Shenlong. Uh, the Toulons fire their mass drivers at the Shenlong and hit it with four, uh, two of those being criticals. Uh, the Shenlong stops one crit and a normal hit with its point defenses, and its armor stops another normal hit, but it suffers crippling damage. Now its hull is on half hull points. Uh, sadly for the uh, Shenlong, this means its armor is cracked, losing it another two hull points in the process. Ooh, not great. Uh, the Berlin then fires with a Cobra laser and scores four hits uh, with burn through, and two of those are crits. Uh, the Shenlong manages to stop one hit with its uh, point defenses, but the other normal uh, hit goes through and the armor uh, uh, through the armor, losing it three more hull points and leaving on just one hull point left. Uh, the Shenlong and its gargoyles are activated next, uh, with station keeping being ordered. Uh, the gargoyle drops into atmosphere while the Shenlong moves towards the Moscow. Uh, the Shenlong opens fire on the Moscow with a plasma storm, getting seven shots, landing five crits and one normal hit. Ooh. Uh, the Moscow's armor stops the normal shot, but the crits are enough to take it out. Now, this is the point where we would roll for uh, what happens, and I was kind of hoping that my ship might blow up in a way that uh, would take out the Shenlong, because there's only got one whole point left, but I just rolled a result for basically dropping into atmosphere and breaking up. Not really that interesting, sadly, and not enough to, and didn't do anything to hurt the Shenlong. Ugh, really wanted it to do something like that. Uh, next, the uh, Scourge go uh, with their uh, Pathfinder and they decide to take up standard orders and they're sort of doing what my uh, uh, my ship was doing and sort of uh, maneuvering around the battle um, to uh, try and get a better, better look on things. Uh, the UCM activate next, uh, but the New Orleans stay at station keeping so they can stay uh, right above where they want to be. Now that's good for them because they just they, they basically decide to uh, drop, they decide that in, in the roundup they're going to be dropping another pair of uh, uh, bits and bobs and they decide they're going to drop some armor, which is always fun. So they've got two in an infantry squad on each industrial sector and an armor squad. And the Scourge would deploy an infantry squad. So they're late coming into this game because they did that whole rushing forward on max thrust and not dropping down into orbit uh, down orbital layers as quickly as possible to try and get down into atmosphere uh they uh were delayed quite a lot so they're gonna be damn it they're suffering so the ucm score another four victory points leaving them on eight to the scourges zero 
So for the first activation of turn five, uh, the UCM activate their Rio, uh, which uh, makes a course change that allows it to make multi uh, two turns. Uh, so it starts to approach the main, co main core of the battle of above the main central cluster there from the other side, uh, which is a plan, I guess, I had. Uh, the Scourge Vanguard is activated next and they use Station Keeping with the Gargoyle standing still and the Shenlong moving to attack the Berlin. Uh, the Shenlong fires on the Berlin with its Plasma Storm, five shots, lands two crits and a normal hit. Uh, the Berlin's point defences uh, unfortunately cannot stop anything nor could its armour so it takes three hull points. Uh, the next activation sees the Wyvern go and use Station Keeping to move towards the Berlin, getting eight shots with its uh, 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 plasma there. Uh, only three hit, none of which are criticals, sadly. Uh, but the point defences luckily managed to stop all of those hits. See, look at that dice roll. Amazing. Just, just amazing. So, you know, <laughs> what else can I say? Sometimes I can roll good dice, eh, guys? You know, I don't always just, just roll ones. Um, so yeah, brilliant on my part. Uh, the Berlin and the Toulons issue stays in keeping and move to attack the Wyvern and the Shenlong. Uh, the Toulons fire at the Wyvern and score one hit, but that's stopped by the uh, Wyvern's uh, point defenses. Uh, the Berlin then uses its Cobra laser to attack the Shenlong at point blank range, scoring all six possible hits with burn through, half of which are crits. Uh, the point defenses stop two of the crits and the armor stops two of the normal hits, but it only had one whole point left and loses two. And the roll for what happens to it is not exciting again, just like with my Moscow, it just silently burns in the void in the atmosphere and yeah, nothing so didn't do anything to knock out my ships. Good for me, but eh, boring in terms of the, uh, well, not boring, but just not as eventful because we just didn't have the exciting dive rolls for that kind of stuff. Because it's always fun when that happens, especially things like radiation bursts. It's always great, but yeah, we didn't get any of that. Uh, in the next activation, the Scourge Pathfinder makes a course change and comes up behind the Berlin. Ooh, tricksy. Uh, the Gargoyles then fire their Plasma Cloud and score three hits, two of which are crits. Uh, the Berlin's point defenses fail to stop anything and its armor stops the normal uh, hit, but it does take the, uh, cri cri uh, the uh, critical damage, uh, unfortunately, because it's now lost uh, half of its hull points. Uh, the result is its engines are disabled and it loses a further two hull points and it starts, uh, its orbit starts to decay. So in the roundup phase, it will be dropping down an orbital layer. Uh, the UCM New Orleans have decided to um, do station keeping and they fire their mass drives at the Scourge Gargoyle, hitting with one shot, which is stopped by the uh, point defences. Now, how about the excitement of ground combat? And this is where the game is won. The Scourge uh, basically win initiative and decide to stay in the industrial sector they are in and the UCM decide to stay put. Well, the Scourge couldn't move because there was an enemy there, but because they can't move if there's someone else there. They can't just abandon the sector. Um, but the UCM have decided to stay put. They feel they've got enough in their uh, in, in the sectors they're in to deal with the Scourge. Scourge, Scourge. i got to get a... What, what's the product? I don't know. Now, to do damage in the uh, uh, ground combat, uh, an infantry squad needs a 4+. Uh, plus. The Scourge roll a 6, uh, which is great because they uh, managed to do one hit. Fantastic, eh? However, the UCM also have an armor unit, which gives them more hits, and they get four four pluses, uh, sorry, three four pluses, uh, hitting them three times. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's gonna hurt, because they've only got one infantry squad there. Uh, so basically the Scourge's hit is allocated to UCM infantry, the scoring one in the infantry squad. Uh, the UCM fail to save because they need a, a five plus as a, as a save on a infantry unit, but they only get a four plus. And the uh, Scourge obviously failed. <laughs> they failed to save their infantry. They had three saves to take. Uh, they needed uh, five pluses and they, uh, their infantry squad died. So that is basically fantastic for the UCM. Not so good for the uh, Scourge. So at this point, the UCM drop another two infantry squads and the Scourge drop one too. Again, into that industrial sector. Maybe they could have tried and claimed another sector to try and contest them. But alas, anyway. 
Now, what we said about the uh, um, Berlin uh, having um, lost its engines and suffering from orbital decay, it now drops into low orbit due to orbital decay. So, in its next turn, it needs to have a get up, or an, uh, you know, it needs to get up out of out of low orbit, or stay, or fix its engines because it is knacked. Otherwise, if it drops into atmosphere, it burns up and dies. So at the top of turn five, this leaves the UCM in control of the cluster, uh, giving them another four victory points, total of 12. I think we're getting this right. Are we getting this right? I hope so. If Well, it doesn't. It's not going to affect the result anyway. <laughs> but I hope we got this right. So let's move on into the last turn, turn six. So for the first activation, the UCM uh, get to go first with their line group and the Rio uses station keeping and moves into the rear of the Ryvern. Wyvern. Ryvern? Wyvern. Get that wrong, aren't I? Why then? Got to get my pronunciations right on this stuff. Uh, the Rio shoots its UF6400 at the Wyvern, scoring two hits and a crit. Uh, the Wyvern point defenses are able to stop one of the normal hits, and its armor stops the other two, but the crit um, just goes through and takes off another hull point. Uh, the Ifrit and Harpies use station keeping to stay still and open fire on the uh, poor Berlin there. Uh, the Ifrit gets three hits with its Plasma Storm and scores a single hit, uh, but the point defenses on the Berlin manage to stop it. Uh, the Harpies fire their Plasma Clouds, hit three times, two of which are crits. And the point defenses stop the normal hit, but the uh, crits go through and cause the Berlin to be destroyed. Um, again, boring result, just falls apart in atmosphere seriously we didn't get any of the fun results uh, on some of the tables this, this this game it would have been nice to get some of them uh the two lawns get to activate next with their uh, uh the, the ucm get to activate next with their two lawns i should say and choose to use station keeping and the two lawns fire their mass drivers at the ifrit getting three hits and one crit how are the ifrits uh point defenses stop the crit and two normal hits but the last normal hit breaches the armor uh sadly um well for the scourge player not for me uh, the Gargoyles activate next and station keep. Uh, Gargoyle, I should say, not Gargoyles, there's just one of them, and fires at a New Orleans, hitting it once with a crit. Uh, the New Orleans uh, point defenses fail to stop it, and the New Orleans unfortunately loses a hull point. Uh, next, the Wyvern takes a max thrust order to take it away from combat, moving through a fine debris field, uh, but doesn't take any further damage. So he basically decided he wanted out of the battle at this point. Uh, the uh, New Orleans then fire at the Gargoyle, hitting with one crit, but that gets stopped by the uh, Gargoyle's point defences. So moving into Roundup, in ground combat, the UCM win initiative and move an army unit into the cluster with a Scourge infantry, giving them two army units and one infantry unit in that uh, cluster. So yeah, the Scourge are in trouble. Uh, in combat, the UCM lose their infantry squad in that cluster, but the Scourge also lose theirs. Well sadly but not really for me and in the final play of the game uh, the scourge drop an infantry unit and the ucm drop more infantry uh, uh into the uh, into those those clusters meaning that they are totally dominating the cluster uh allowing them to win the game 16 victory points to nil well what can i say about that i mean it's a fun game but I think we were both very, very, very rusty. It's a new rule book, a new rule set, and I think we were a bit uh, not quite getting things right the way we'd have liked to get them right. I think it was too much concentration on the central cluster. Um, it would have been better. I don't know. Maybe I should have gone to another cluster so I wasn't getting congested over there. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was just one of those things. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, very dominant win for the UCM. I think the problem was the Scourge lost their Gargoyle. They didn't get enough it, it, down into atmosphere quick enough. And it's just way the game. As I said, not played it since before the pandemic, which is a shame because it's a great game. One of my favorites. Anyways, that's that. I've done it in a whole new way, a whole new software for work process. And that's kind of what's been the delay in getting these out, um, developing a new workflow, because the, what I was doing before was taking an absolute age where I've done this in a, I've pretty much done most of this in a couple of hours. You can probably tell by the production quality, but I'm getting better. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> um, I'm working on it. Uh, anyway, so uh, I will be back. Uh, hopefully soon with another battle report. I'm thinking of doing Legion next, Star Wars Legion next. Um, and that'll be that. 
but yeah no it's 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 been it's been a lot of fun um i'm enjoying i i, I really want to get playing this game more but there's not really much of a local scene near me which is a shame um but we'll try and do it so uh yeah also the imperium reports now because uh, moving a house getting delayed and all this it's it's i know it's been it's been a rough year uh i think what i'm gonna do with those is i'm gonna start them again pretty much from where I was but I'm going to wait until 10th edition comes out and then I'm going to basically start them again using 10th edition rules at least that's the plan anyway uh, thanks for watching if you liked it give us a thumbs up if you didn't like it you know thumbs down it's always, always good and leave a comment you know like subscribe the usual things and stuff and anyway thank you I'll see you later um, and uh, keep rolling the dice